In the previous video, we never talked about transient response. Let me give you a hint. When you wire up a resistor circuit, they don't exhibit this effect. But what about the circuits that contain non-resistor components, such as capacitors and inductors? Let's go take a look. Last time, I front-loaded a bunch of meth before doing any measurements. This time, I will go easy on you and start with some experiments. Resistors have resistance measured in ohms. One ohm is practically nothing. Capacitors have capacitance measured in farads. One farad is a lot. Even one millifarad is plenty. The biggest capacitors you'll commonly encounter are usually in the tens or hundreds of microfarads. Inductors have inductors measured in henrys. The unit got its name because inductors used to have an iron core and Henry Cavill played the man of steel. If you apply voltage to a passive circuit, leave the room and come back a while later, capacitors will act as open circuit, while inductors will assume the role of a short circuit. Shortly after the power is applied, however, inductors and capacitors will exhibit a strange behavior. Enough talking. We saw some equations first either way, but now let's make an experiment. Let's wire up a circuit, such as voltage divider, but this time replace one resistor with a capacitor. Output probe connected a signal generator goes to the plus node. We have to make sure the probe is in X1 mode. Alligator clip goes to the minus. Connect one probe to an input channel to the middle node. No need to connect the alligator clip, but why not? Connect it next to the other one. I've also connected the output signal to the second input channel, so we can clearly see what's going on. You don't have to do it. Signal generator will be set to 10 kHz, 0.5 amplitude and 0.5 volts offset. This will output a 1 volt signal that will be turning on and off. We set the signal to square wave. With that set, I will hit the auto scale button. It takes a bit of time to load. Now I will set the triggers in the trigger menu. I will set the value on the second channel. I didn't set the correct attenuation ratio for input 1, remember to do that, and set it to 10. Also, Correct the scale. As you can see, I have different scales, which is for demonstration purposes. OK, now we will zoom in a bit. As you can clearly see, the shape of the voltage on the common node, yellow, does not follow the applied voltage, green. It follows this equation. The funny symbol tau equals resistance times capacitance. Circuit is considered to have reached a steady state after 5 tau has passed. Upon discharge, equation is a bit different, like this. Tau is still resistance times capacitance. Enough about voltage, it's time to talk about current events. But I'm tss. Just joking, I'll let you do that on your own. Shouldn't be too hard since you know the capacitor's voltage, supplied voltage and resistance. Current equals voltage over resistance, remember? Let's modify the circuit. Let's swap out the capacitor for an inductor 
and conduct the same experiment. Before I show you the results, I would encourage you to predict what the waveform will look like. I'll give you a hint. While capacitors resist voltage change, inductors resist current change. Pause the video and think about it. Done thinking? Good. Let's write them down. Tau is a bit different this time and equals inductance over resistance, while the nominal value of the current equals voltage zero over resistance. For simplicity's sake, the rest of the video will revolve around RC circuits. Consider RL circuits your optional homework. To experimentally determine the value of tau, it is the easiest to remember that in RC circuit, at 3 tau, signal reaches 95% of its nominal value. Measurements can be done using cursors. Set one at 95% of signal steady value, which is 0.95 volts in this case. This gives us just above 0.9 volts. Stopping the oscilloscope will help us here. Now set two vertical cursors, one at the beginning and one where the curve intersects the horizontal cursor. Let me zoom in a bit, a bit more. The difference is automatically calculated and its value is 6 microseconds. The components used were a 100 ohm resistor and a 10 nanofarads capacitor. If you're playing along, you will be very skeptical of this claim. I got 3 tau equals 6 microseconds, while it should be 3 microseconds. Blame the probe I used to connect signal generator's output. Its resistance is intentional and helps mitigate signal reflections. Yes, if you know resistor and capacitor values in the circuit, you can calculate the resistance of the probe. If this sounds like extra steps, that is because it is. One way to solve the problem is to use known capacitor and resistor values and determine applied voltage. Remember that when you will need a cheap battery level indicator in your project. In this video, we talked about RC and RL circuits. I encourage you to make predictions about what would happen if we swap positions of R and C to make a CR circuit. What if we did the same with RL to make an LR? What if we made an RC circuit? Seriously. Make your predictions and try them out. I bet you will be wrong on LC. So, did I answer the question? What about if you excite the circuit with something other than a square wave? A sine wave, for example. Try it yourself and let us know what happens in the comments. In the meantime, like, share and subscribe. Bye!